Ready? Can you turn that music on? Great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, welcome to uh, NAPB 2012. I guess this is the first panel in the content first uh, stream of panels. My name is Phil Gurren. I'm one of the board. Of, I'm on the board of directors uh, for NAPB, and we are delighted to have an all-star international panel here to discuss format wars. And the format business, as everybody knows, is a well. It's part of the uh, business that fuels a very large industry. Um, from some notes that I have here, according to a, a report recently, uh, there's an organization called FRAPA, which is a format uh, organization. There were, a, from 2006 to 2008, there were about 445 formats that were being produced all around the world, generating production revenue of over $10 billion, and it's an important business. Um, and so we're very lucky to have people here who spend their lives finding formats to help uh, distribute and sell all over the world. Let me introduce our panel, if I may. I'll just start with right to my left here, because, Mike, I can, I, can, I can roll with this. Vasha Wallace, Senior Vice President, Format Acquisitions, Fremantle Media. Um, I'm just going to go that way, and we'll just do it. We'll just introduce everybody that way. Then we have Mike Beal, Director of International Formats from ITV Studios. Jens Richter, Managing Director of 7-1 International. Uh, Grant, uh, Carolyn Spodsberg, Managing Director of Banerjee International. And Grant Ross, the Global Head of Acquisitions from the Endemol Group. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the format business. It is a very big business. I always like to say, I'm a format creator, and we make them. But we, we try to create the ideas. But if no one makes them, we don't make any money. And then if we make them, we make some fees. But the only way you really make money is if it's distributed. That's when you really make some money. And we need, as a format creator, we need people like these guys and their companies to sell these shows around the world. But let's start, we'll start very simply. Everybody talks about formats. What is a format? Anybody want to start? How would you define a format? Uh, funny enough, because you, you gave us a little bit of a tip off that that might come up, <laughs> which is, we thank you for that, because trying to define it otherwise. But according to the dictionary, I thought it was a good place to start. Uh, a format is an organization, style, plan, or type of something. And I think that does capture what a format is. We, um, we take programs that are produced around the world. We look at the, the organization of that idea, the, the type of it, the style of it, the, uh, the content. And we put it into a package, which is what we sell as a format. I always think of a format as being a skeleton, if you like, a human skeleton. And the skeleton is what you sell around the world. And the skeleton is universal. Every, every country has bodies. Um, it's also culturally neutral. And when you make the format in your country, what makes it culturally relevant is the, the kind of the fat on the bones as such, the skin. It's the host, the challenges, the questions, the tasks. It's all of those things that help make it relevant for your country. But the skeleton stays the same wherever you do it. I'm totally with Basha. Um, it, there needs to be a clear skeleton. Um, it needs, the idea needs to be innovative. It needs to be something new to make it interesting for us. Um, and that new, fresh idea needs to be able to travel globally, or at least multi-territorial. I mean, we know that, yes, Carolyn, I'm sorry. But of course, we can all agree also that the definition of a format is, is changing. And the, 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 what today is defined as a format is maybe different from what we defined 10 years ago. And I think more than anything today, when we sell formats, we sell expertise. We sell time. Our buyers are buying time uh, to get on air and to get it right from the beginning. So I think to, you know, selling a format is selling expertise and experience in producing also. So it's not just the skeleton? It's, it's not just the skeleton, and, and less and less. It used to be very, very much the skeleton and very, very much the format pillars, but we are seeing that that is, is getting uh, broadened out, that definition. Well, what would you say isn't a format? Because you know the, the conversation is always a producer comes to a distributor and says, I want you to take this. This is a format, and sometimes it's clear. A game show, generally speaking, is a clear format. If there's rules and set and all those things. But in the world of a lot of docu-soap, you follow your local character, and, and it's a rather generic storytelling thing, and there is no structure between the episodes, and it's really 
depending on that local character and maybe a profession that you only find in that area or in that country, that, that would make it difficult. And it's, if you don't know what you're going to get week after week, then it's not a format, I would say. You get a lot of producers who love making formats because they know what they're going to get. They know exact, They can control the casting, all of that, but they have very clear boundaries. If you don't know what you're going to get, because say, for example, it's talent, <coughs> something like the Kardashians, that's, that's not a format because you can't you can't control it. You don't have mm -hmm. boundaries around that. I think I think following on from Caroline was saying that we take and your reference to the Kardashians. I think if there's a specific knowledge of how to cover that, how to shoot the Kardashians, not everywhere knows how to build that structure of a reality show when you don't know what's going to happen. In fact, the reverse. So you don't know what's going to happen, so you need the knowledge and experience of the producers that have done it but to tell you how to do it. Formatted elements. So that it has elements which are formatted, but it may not be a clear format. I agree with Vasha at the end of the day because you, you are no doubt we're going to talk about how you protect the format. And you can't protect consultancy. You can't protect know-how. It's, you know, it's what you were saying a little bit earlier. It's really those uh, characteristic and distinctive features of, a, of an episodic program you know, that, that repeat themselves. And, and it's a combination of these distinctive features such as framework and running order, uh, rules, uh, graphics even, things like that. And it's the fact that these repeat themselves each episode that allows us to protect a format, if you like. So if you sort of start saying that, you know, a format can be or is a docu-soap, I think you're going to be in icy waters on the legal side of things. You know, you might want to exchange practices because of relationships and by formats like that and of course why not but at the end of the day if somebody comes along and says I'm not going to pay for that but I'm going to do it anyway there's probably not a lot you can do and it's based on characters more than you know specific features yeah yeah I think what I was trying to say is that if if that buyer exactly if that buyer can get value from you sure. as the producer or distributor then it's not defined as a format specifically but that there is a value to the buyer in, mm. in coming to us for those ideas. Uh, all techniques, I know Shine um, distribute One Born Every Minute, mm. which is a, a workplace documentary in a maternity hospital. We've seen those around the world, but they had a specific way of following stories, covering those stories, and that's what they're selling. Yeah. I, 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 I agree, and I think we have to be very, I, I would not today rule out any genre from the format business, you know, and I see, I, I think it will, will change more and more, to be honest. Um. Well, let's, let's talk about wh what territories, I mean, you guys see people from all over the world, what territories are most known for creating formats, and what are some of the new territories where you're finding formats? I think the, you know, the, the big ones are without doubt. We all know that the UK and, and America are uh, you know, the dominant uh, creators and exporters of formats. Um, Holland coming in in a third, third place, probably you know, because it's a laboratory type territory for the animals of this world. But you know, the UK, I think last year, exported something like 140 different, uh, different formats. Uh, you know, some of those went into one territory and some of them went into a lot more. But, uh, you know, that's a lot of formats coming out of one territory. And you know, I think America was not far off 90. So once again, it's a lot of formats. Grant, why do you think the UK has so many? Uh, I think, you know, above all, they're a creative, uh, they're creative uh, uh, company, uh, territory, without a doubt. English is, of course, easy to export rather than Russian or Portuguese, or whatever it may be. Uh, I think the system, uh, the television system in, in UK allows for a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, shows to go on air. You'll get a game show commission for three weeks. In some territories it might be stripped daily for forever. So you've got a big turnover. And it's a competitive market so you can see and look at the ratings and know very well that they will correspond to a lot of territories around the world. I believe that a good format can come from anywhere. I think we've seen historically where good formats have come from but I really do believe that anyone can come up with a good format and it doesn't have to be limited by geography. Um, for example, one of our top selling formats, Farmer Wants a Wife, did start its life as a docu-soap in the UK, but it then became very heavily formatted in Belgium, which is not a, a country that is as known. Take Me Out, another one of our very successful formats, started in France. Hole in the Wall came from Japan. So there's a whole, lots of opportunities for places to come from that you, you may not expect it. 
What's the most unusual place you guys have found a successful format? Well, there's too many parameters in that question. Well, <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> You don't want to mention that country. I mean, that's yeah. almost oh, yeah. no, no, no. To be, to be honest, I'm hoping positive. it's going to be Miami. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm with I'm with Fasha. Uh, a successful format can come absolutely from ev everywhere. And, and Grant is right. It's UK, US, Scandi, Benelux. That's where where most of the stuff comes from. Um, Belgium, I'm with you. Belgium, sometimes really surprising stuff comes up. I mean, we picked up the Benny Dorn bastards there, and then um, within 16, 18 months, we had it on NBC premiering last week. So it's like. You can be really lucky and find stuff and jewels anywhere. I think that, that, that you know, one thing is where the format originates, which I agree can be everywhere. But the next thing is where do you get the first or the second mm -hmm. adaption of the format? Yeah. And if you get that in an English-speaking market, UK, US, then you, you take that format to a new level. So, so there's really like the original place and then the, the first adaptions of the format. Absolutely right. I mean, it's like to, to stay with Benidorm, for instance, I mean, we sold in a couple of continental European key territories. Then we, we casted it up with Betty White, sold it to NBC, and once we had it on NBC, immediately we got the orders mm. for the UK and for Australia. So it's that was the signal, like, version, boom, immediately Australia. it went out. It's marvelously produced in Australia. It is the yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a double-sided sword, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's, first of all, we talk about these big territories, but when it comes to scripted and things like that, you know, you look at Argentina, they're... Uh, you know, they're pumping out the scripted formats now, and a lot of yeah. them are Latin American territories. You know, but going back, it's a double-sided sword in the sense that, uh, you know, if it's not going to work in one of these two major markets, if you do sell it in America, people will buy the rights to it around the world, but they'll sit and wait for the American version, generally. There's always exceptions to the rules. And if it fails, and, you know, obviously yours didn't, but if it fails in one of those territories... You're screwed. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> and, I mean... Once again, there's always exceptions to the rules, and, and you were mentioning Farmer Wants a Wife. I mean, fantastic show. It's a great show. It's one of the only global brands that I know of that f didn't work or was a docu-soap in the UK and really didn't work in America, but yet it's rolling out around the world brilliantly. Uh, but that's an exception to the rule, as I mentioned. I think, um, I think also, funny enough, with this group sitting up here, the consolidation around the world means we have to look in other places because... Take the UK, for example. I mean, Endemol, Fremantle, ITV, BBC, um, um, Banerjee. We're all, we're all there, and we're all picking up formats all the time. Um, so uh, we'll be creating our own, and there's, there's not enough room in those. So we've got to look in different places for the new ideas. Well, let's pick that up. How do you guys do that? Because of consolidation, where in there, everybody's getting bought, and all the creation comes from within, how are you guys finding those formats around the world that are not part of each one of your own stable, your own family. If you... We just come and talk to you. Yeah. Right. Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's one of the questions now is there is a lot of consolidation going on. And if you find that one format of that one independent producer who gets, it becomes really hard and harder to find that format, especially that guy, is um, you have to invite that producer to become part of your family. Meaning, um, we spoke about consultancy and, and the realization of the production. Um, like, for instance, with, with Benny Dom and the creator, Tim, this Belgium guy, he works on the productions. He's an executive producer on the American version. So we try to have that creator, if he wants to, and he has the time to, and all that kind of stuff, to get him involved in the local versions. Um, I think that's a big add-on if you talk to a producer to, to, to win him over to work with you. But I think we all, I mean, we, we probably all do the same and we run fast and we try to run faster than each other, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, I think it's, this is a people-based business, you know, and it's very much about having the right team of acquisition people that are out there, that are on the ground, that are meet, meeting people. You don't do these deals over the phone or over an email. It's a face-to-face -face business. So I think it's very much about, you know, being there and meeting the people in all the small corners of the world <coughs> and through a personal relation, gain their trust. Um, so, so the very personal side of the acquisition, I think, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of our information from our production companies because <coughs> we have production companies all around the world. So we tend to talk to a lot of them. And I find 
some of the best information I get about shows is just from talking to people at markets like this, talking to producers, finding out people are telling us what's going on, and just getting that information and then feeding it back out to our producers and finding out what they think they can sell, what they're looking for. Do you guys think consolidation has hurt the creativity? <coughs> Excuse me. Wake up, good morning. <laughs> Everybody there? That was an answer. Yeah. Good morning. That's what I think of that question. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, it, it has two sides, really. Because obviously, as an independent, it's tough to, to sell your formats into these big groups. Um, uh, but, and, and it's also tough to sell it directly into the, to the networks because, I mean, it, today you have to fund a lot, at least to retain your rights. But on the other <coughs> hand, I think that this consolidation also means that never has there been spent so much money on creativity. I mean, we are all investing heavily in pilots, in pre-financing of shows, in, in, in finding the right shows for our catalog. So, so it's really, it, it's two-sided. Uh, and I think there's, it, there's never been invested so much in creativity than now. And why consolidation is a buzzword, and it's certainly true, I believe it goes all in circles in a way. So you see some of these really big production groups, and then you always see like individual creative guys leaving the big groups because they want to restart with their own shop um, and you have fresh new talent coming up. Um, there is constant churn out there. I mean, consolidation makes your jobs a little harder, I would think. Not, not necessarily. Consolidation also helps to, to, to um, I mean, all of us have also, we are linked to production groups. So we have production companies in the various territories. So once we found a format, um, we are also able to roll out really, really quickly and being involved into the production and se secure the production quality. Um, that's a good argument pro consolidation in terms of rollout. <laughs> it's like go both ways. Well, let me ask you this. For some of the people in our audience here, maybe they're more independent right now. How, what's the best way for somebody who is growing a business, they're a creator, they're not part of a group, what's the best way for them to find their way to you? Well, like from a Fremantle perspective, we have a very open door policy and we're always interested in talking to people. And we have lots of different ways of talking to those people. We have a very good track record of, of working with partners all around the world. And we also have a global network in which to, to roll that out. So sometimes when someone pitches me an idea, if I'm not sure about it, I know I'm just a phone call away or a conversation from one of my colleagues who can tell me if they think it's got legs in their, in their territory or not, which is a benefit for me of being part of a really global network that has people on the ground locally in every territory that counts. Yeah, very I, oh, sorry, no, sorry, no, I think everybody, I'd like every, everybody yeah, yeah, no, should no, answer no, this one. No, very similar. We're, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm, I've only been at ITV for six months. We've, we're very keen to hear from you know, creators from well, what's the, What I'm looking for, what's the process? <coughs> Give me what a call. Yeah. Email. Um, don't, don't send in your idea cold. Let's meet, as Caroline was saying earlier, it's a relationship business. Let's get to know each, you know, make sure we're the right people to be working with, get to understand what we actually do and where we are and what, we, uh, what the shows that we do. Um, because the hardest thing is actually balancing this huge investment in internal development that's constantly churning and actually making sure we don't suddenly acquire the same show from external. So there is a hard balance there, there to be had. Right. Yep. The process is different whether it's just, just an idea yet or it comes with a track record. So there is an independent producer who produced that show in the first market already and has a rating track record. Um, if it comes with a rating track record, the, the process can be amazingly fast because you look at that tape, you look at that record, you look at that show, you analyze it, why did it work in that home territory and that home territory could be anywhere in this world and then you make up the ideas could this travel, and if so, why? And then you go out to market right away, and you do this strategic market planning, try to get that show sold in a relevant market to get to the next level. If it is just a paper idea, a paper format, um, obviously it's a little bit harder, and then we talk to the local production companies that we have ourselves in the territories, and, and try to hook it up with one of those first. I think, to be honest, I think it's really easy to get in contact with all of us because we're so bloody af afraid to miss out on anything. You so, call us. So, I mean, we will, we will be very alert. But I think it's also, I mean, it's also about investing in your pitch. 
And when I say investing, it's not only about money. It's, you know, when, 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 when you present your, your idea, it's also very much how much do you believe in it yourself? How much are you willing to invest yourself? Have you made a small taste to take or whatever when you come and pitch it? Um, and then the process after, I, I think it's, 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 it's also, again, you know, depending on, on if we're starting from paper or we're starting from track. And if we're starting on paper, I think that, that the investment willingness is key, you know, that as distributor, when we take p paper in, it's because we're willing to invest in pilots, uh, because otherwise it won't. Do you think that's happening a lot now? I think it's happening more, and I think it's absolutely necessary. Um, and I think it's, it's to work on paper uh, as a distributor, uh, at least from, from our perspective, um, we, when we take a paper format in, it's because we, we are ready to, to pilot it and fund, fund pilot it. And then with the, with the pilot production, I mean, you get the format from, I don't know, some country, and then you look at that format and you believe it work, could work well in that country. In that country, I mean, the first country, you could produce a pilot rather cheap in a low-cost country rather efficiently. So it's mm. Yeah, we do the same things in our group. And if we see the potential in something, sometimes we'll borrow the set of another country for one of their shows, and we can do something with it there with a view that we're going to roll it out through the group. And we'll often put a lot of local development resources from the, one of the territories that's kind of championing it and is the one that loves the show. They'll be the one that will um, be the sort of lead territory and put all their energy into trying to sell well, I think, it. You know, when it. When it comes to Endemol, you know, there's many different processes in getting a, an idea in the door. And, you know, Endemol is above all a creative company. Uh, you know, a lot of the ideas that we uh, put on air are our ideas and, and that's, you know, that's our main motivation if you like. Uh, so when we look to acquire a format outside that creative model, the format has to have something special. In other words, uh, like you were saying a little bit earlier, there's no point us going out and acquiring a paper format. Uh, we've already got literally hundreds of them. You know, We're 32 offices and operating in over 40 uh, territories, so you can imagine how many creatives that is around the world. It doesn't make sense for us to go outside that, uh, that, that group there and acquire a paper format. So people often ask me, you know, I'd love to present you a format. You know, first of all, we're, you know, you've got to reply, it's got to be a format. It's not an idea. You know, people present a lot of times just an idea, mm. which is not a format. But I'd encourage them to sort of go and see the local uh, MD of the local office and have a chat with them and perhaps mm -hmm. there's something to do to be done on, on that, uh, on that uh, level there. Otherwise, I guess on our sort of level, we're looking for that show, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, that show that's going to go to air, that's already piloted. If it's fortunate, it's on air. We've got a track record. But something, and something that generally, and as much as it's horrible to say, it comes from a production partner that we know uh, has the credibility to execute it. Uh, we know is good. And that's going to make the chances of that format being a better show. And that show we all want. <laughs> well, let's talk about that then. Okay, so let's imagine that there's that one brand new show that somehow is not homegrown from each of your groups. It's some independent producer created pen, whatever that is. And it's going on air, and it's a show that you all think you can sell into your group. I'm just starting to see smiles here. Why? I know Carolyn said it before, it's a personal business as well. But why should somebody go to you or you, or you, or you, or you. You're all great companies, but you all do it slightly differently. Or maybe you do it slightly the same. What are we going to do with Penn? You all want it. It's commissioned on NBC, but it doesn't have a distributor attached. What happens now? Well, I think you've got to look at, you've got to work with a company that you feel comfortable with and that's championing your idea. I always say to people, what gives us the edge is that we, we are, a large production company. We have offices everywhere it matters. Our people are there on the ground pitching to their broadcasters. But I think the thing that really gives us the edge is also our Fremantle Media Enterprises, which is our sister division. So I'm production, they're the um, enterprises side. And they have 
the most amazing ways of getting additional revenue from shows. I mean, they have this thing called a wheel of value. So you get something like The Price is Right, and they will look at that and they will say, what else can we do with it? So you can now go to Vegas and play The Price is Right live in Vegas. You, it's not just about mugs and t-shirts anymore, it's about whole clothing ranges. So it's about your ability to maximise as much as you can for the producer and for the broadcaster so that you're doing a fantastic job all around. Yeah, we'll do the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. Put more money. <coughs> that was your pitch? <laughs> that was it. She was pretty good. That, that was it. There's journalists, <laughs> Mike, there's journalists here. Just wrote, same as I think. It's, it's, it's no, no, seriously. Um, no, I, I think it does, come, it, it will come down to the personal relationship and, 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 and that idea. Does it fit with us? Does it fit in the catalogue? Does it... Uh, is it crossing over anything else we're doing? Um, can we work with the individual producer? You know, because that's a tough, ba you know, balance to keep going. Have we, you know, because in good times, okay, everybody's happy. Actually, in good times, not necessarily, because we is the money flowing properly? You know, um, are they getting what they deserve? Do they th they never think they're getting what they deserve? Um, <laughs> all of those things. So it, it will ultimately boil down to the relationship. Can can we get on? Can we have those conversations um, when we need to have them? Those tough things. Um, and will pen fit? in our pencil case. See what I've done there? Clever. Yeah. I, I think the relationship's the starting point, isn't it? But at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be the, the deal that is going to decide whether they go, they swing left or swing right. Uh, the deal, and, and as you were pointing out, Vasha, you know, the possibility to maximise the revenue uh, and, and the speed in which you can do it as well. And I, you know, I think uh, one of our arguments amongst many arguments is the ability to roll out a format <laughs> around the world pretty quickly. Uh, you know, when you've got all these production outfits uh, all over the world, and these guys are you know, generally the best producers or the second best producers in each territory, you can sort of say to these guys, well, you know, look, we took a show like The Money Drop, uh, a UK show, you know, it's in 32 territories, produced in 32 territories in 20 months. You know, it's a pretty, pretty good example of what we can do to your show. And so I think, you know, there's logical Arguments like that that also allow to swing things. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's business. Is, is that within that's within your own group, though, isn't it? That's, that's a, not that's a third party. A, no, that's not a third party, yeah. but it allows it to do that. But I think we 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 are all you know offering a lot of the same things, and then we are also offering different things. And you know, at Benetier, if you look at this group, we are still the youngest player in the market, and probably have still the smallest catalogue. So obviously part of what we offer is the fact that you don't disappear, neither as a company or as an IP uh, right owner in a, in a huge catalog with 300 pages and a group of, of 30 plus companies. Um, so, so, <laughs> so, we, so, so we are all offering different things. I think we have at Benidei right now a pretty unique position because we have the muscles and the size to get out there and be on the ground and make all the noise it takes today to roll, roll out a format overnight. But at the same time, we still can uh, have a, a boutique approach to our, to our partners because, uh, because their format uh, is not one among 200, but one among a lot less. So at least for now, I think that's our edge yes. among others. Well, now we're in the competition of being the youngest on the block. That's fun. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's everything they said, um, and um, that was your pitch. No? It was. And then, in addition, <laughs> um, <laughs> it is you have to invite the creative guy. I mean, I was smiling when you brought that up because there was one format where I think we most of us were after, and and you do have these situations where you hear about a show and you call that guy, and and you know that guy gets called from other people as well. And then obviously you're in this, I want that thing, and I want your baby because of. Um, it's very much inviting that creative to become part of your sales pro process and part of your production process. Because these are formats, these are productions created by these very creative guys or ladies. Um, they treat them as their babies. Uh, they're very sensitive when it's about that. Um, so you have to make them part of the process. And the other thing is money. It sounds very simple, but um, there are producers out there, independent producers, who got awfully burned in the past by not being paid their licensor shares, even after successful rollouts of their formats. 
Um, and, and there you also have to be straightforward with them. Cut the easiest deal possible, make it really transparent, and pay the money. Um, and, um, and then the other thing we said that earlier, be really fast. When you roll out a format, you have to be really, really fast because you're selling a property which in court you barely can protect. Um, so well, let, before we get to we, some we questions, to there, there were two, two more quick questions I wanted to get to, but I think you just set it up that last one. How do you protect a format in this world, especially where things move so quickly? Things are seen on YouTube and people are knocking it off in different countries. What can you do to protect your format? We don't, everybody don't have to answer. We'll just do this and one more question. I feel, from my perspective, I, I've been in this specific role for just over a decade, and generally I've found rip-offs don't work because rip-offs generally are a bad version of a good show. So they don't mm. want to make it like the good show, so they make it slightly different, so it ends up being a, a bad imitation. And generally they don't work. The other thing I've found is broadcasters are becoming more savvy and they want to be part of a successful format. So when we roll a format out, it comes with a Bible, the support that these guys have mentioned, and broadcasters want that. And they often want to be part of an international brand, so they want to, to be that version of Got Talent or, or The Price is Right, so that it's not just, you know, it's, it's got all of that addition to it. And I think that you're really seeing that now, that people want to be part of, of that whole format rollout process. I think, the, as you were saying, the format has to protect itself. You have to be the... The, the tipex, the sellotape, mm. the hoover, you know, the brand defining version of that format. So, so Got Talent is, is a what is a brand defining um, format in that area. You know, come dine with me that, that we do, which is rolled out to a, a, a lot of territories. <coughs> you know, there have been a lot of dinner party shows, but that one keeps going. It's generally on daily everywhere and is going for the hundreds of episodes. Are you guys? You know, it's, it goes back to what we're saying a little bit earlier. You know, what is a format? What's not a format? And as we're saying, you know, distinctive features. Uh, you cannot protect a format that's not a format, uh, but you can protect the format which is, and and you have to protect it. It's a brand. You know, it's a global brand that brings in a lot of revenue for a company. So when you get people playing silly games in different territories and trying to rip these formats off, uh, you have to go in there and you have to go in there heavily. Uh, you know. A big brother is a brand that we all know that's been around the world. And of course, you know, people have tried to sort of do similar type shows. And it's very important that a company like Andamol make sure that that doesn't, uh, that doesn't go on. We need to protect that band, that brand. But I think, I mean, more, more than anything, how to protect your format is package, package it and sell it. Sell it like hell and sell it fast, you know. Get it out there, get it on screen. And as a distributor, stay there. You don't... You don't, the, the distributor's work is not done when you've sold a show. You have to make sure that the show, the, the adaption of the format is taken care of, that it's done well, that the owner of the format is, is involved somehow in the, in the local productions of the show. And you, and you stay on it. And in a way, as a distributor, your work is not done until the last episode is off air again. And, and, and that's part of protecting a format uh, as well, I believe. Now, do you folks feel you're going to be finding formats that are generated on the internet? Yes. Are you finding that now? I think it's a really, really exciting space, yeah. absolutely. And it's uh, you, one of the things you've got about the online space is that you can, it's very instant, and you can see people responding to it instantly. So I think, I think there's a lot of potential out there in, in that world. And they're the first countries where you can actually start uh, where you can go in where, where actually these online platforms are commissioning as well. Mm -hmm. So it both, it becomes interesting as a source and becomes interesting as a client as well. But when it's already out there on YouTube, you think you can protect it? Sometimes you, you put yourself, I mean, sometimes you work with YouTube. Mm. Right. I True. mean, in the marketing mm. process, you put bits and pieces of your show out there on purpose. Sure. It's like and you can monetize YouTube now, as long as you look after your brand. Yeah. Right. You go on, you tag it. I mean, YouTube won't do anything for you, but you tag your show, and that'll bring money in. We're launching two channels with YouTube um, this year, a, a pet channel and an education channel, so you're going to get lots of um, cute puppies and kittens. But the way I see it, it's also an opportunity to, you know, for potentially testing things out and see, see how they do, and then we can also work with those in the television space. So it's a really exciting space for, for producers because there's lots of new opportunities for content. I also think brands... You know, the big global brands will be new and important players in the marketplace, uh, and they will be our competitors because they would eventually also start to buy formats. 
to produce them and put them on their own platforms. So I think the whole uh, evolution around the big global brands stepping into this industry is also something very, very interesting. We have little, are there any questions? Anybody want to ask some questions? Is there somebody here who can walk around with a microphone? Great. We have about nine minutes to go. Well, we'll start right here. Please. Good morning. Well, I guess uh, this uh, session makes my 40 hours transit uh, worth it. I have a very specific question. Is it called a territory, a country, or a language as far as our uh, target audience is concerned? Because um, you have, I will speak about my case, the Middle East. Um, you have shows like uh, Idol or It's Got Talent, or somebody would buy the rights and call it Arabs Got Talent or Arab Idol. And it covers about 14 countries where air, whereas like when I'm watching uh, Idol, 99% of the music that's presented is either from uh, uh, Egypt or Lebanon or the Gulf countries and uh, Morocco or Algeria is completely out. So if I want to do Morocco Idol, I can't because somebody has purchased the rights for the Middle East. Or if I want to do Morocco's Got Talent, I also know. Uh, so, you know, this is... So and what's the question? I'm the question is, uh, how do you define the territory? Because uh, when you sell it to a single entity that's doing it in classical Arabic or just in the, the other side, the Middle East side of the Arab world, you know, it, let, it lets the North African audiences, you know, it leaves, uh, uh, it's right. good potential for the... For the for so, the, the anyone want to try? I, I think if you're, um, it, it does, I can't, it, it does depend on the territory, but I know, for example, in Asia, Sometimes we'll do a pan-Asian version of something, and then sometimes we'll do a specific territory version of that, and it may be in a different language. So I think it, you've got to look at what makes sense for the show and what <laughs> makes sense for those territories. And sometimes you may find what starts out as a pan-Arabic version may end up, you then have an opportunity to do a specific Moroccan version, and then that may be more language-specific. And I think you've seen examples of that happening with other formats. Somebody else? Hi. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, so, hi, I'm Richa. I'm from Keshava Productions, and I produce content that inspires. I'm asking uh, a question related to the formats, which is that does having a new format make an idea more sellable? Or is it something, is uh, having a new idea, a new format, give an idea more sellability in the market out there? Uh, <coughs> Depends on the idea. Sorry, that's a really bad answer. Um, no, obviously, if it's a new format with a new idea in it, if I'm understanding the question, question correctly, then that's, that's great. But it, the, if it's distinct and different and original, then a new format will sell. We're all going to be excited yeah, yeah. about it. <laughs> but it's got to be more than an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't buy ideas, so to speak. To what everybody's been saying here, it should be a fully fleshed yeah. out uh, yeah. format. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Joan Jacob and I'm from Georgia State University, so I represent the Academy. Um, and it's really interesting to see that scholarship kind of lags behind about in global media. Um, and while formats are kind of the old, newest kid on the block, as they're getting more established, how do you see the business, this business model as, as a new model of globalization? Do you see it as becoming more dominant? I mean, it's obviously getting more dominant, um, or as dominant as, as selling finished products. How do you see this continuing in, as a trend in the future? Do you think it, it really is a new mode of uh, television globalization? I, I, I mean, I think the format business is definitely here to stay. I think that there's nothing, you know, a, a true uh, hit format can really turn around a, a broadcast or a network overnight and move market shares very, very fast. So I think the, 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 the business of, of moving I, you know, formats that can do that uh, around the world is, is absolutely here to stay because the need is here to stay. So I don't know if that answers your question. But, but also formats are so local. They're so, they, they are universal, but they, every country makes it their own. So in, in, a, in a way, it's counter to globalization and that every country has their own their own formats, and then every country has the ability to come up and devise their own formats that they can sell back out. So I think it's it's a real flow of um, ideas. Let me make country, yeah, country. exactly. It's more yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You you have an opportunity for a whole new flow of ideas coming from from other places. 
There's someone else over here? Yes. Oh, right here, this lady down front. Is it on? Okay, good morning. Good morning, good morning. everyone. My name is Maxine Teller, and I'm, I have a very different question, similar to what she's saying in terms of different format, new format. And um, I'm from the Caribbean, and I create Caribbean content. And looking around, we are, of course, the minority. And we are trying to break into the US to have our own identity, Caribbean people, but not just African American people, because we have different cultures and we want to share that with the world. Are you looking at contents that are um, different, that much different? Or you'll say, no, I'm staying away from that. It can, we said that earlier, I think, it can come really from anywhere, that new show, that new idea. Now, you said something very interesting. You said something about your cultural background and that you want to give your format a special, specific flavor. That could be the tricky part. So we are all looking for the new stuff, wherever it comes from. If it's too, the flavor is too local, too specific to a certain culture, then we have to look at that great new show um, in a way like, could that be a hurdle if going with that show somewhere else? Having said that, if you're creating formats down in the Caribbean, I think I should come down there and spend some time. <laughs> 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 and see what's going on. I was creating here. It was. I have a If it's about the American dream, it will work internationally. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. <laughs> Somebody else had a question over here. Hi, yeah, my name is Zach Shake. I run the U.S. office of a company called Attentional. We're a media consultancy. So uh, the question I've got is regarding um, first territory performance. How do you guys disseminate the actual ratings? Um, because often producers will come to us and they want us to spin the ratings in a certain way, so it then <coughs> looks good. You answered your own question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we look for all the positive. No, it's um, actually, funnily enough, good ratings don't necessarily mean, or oh, sorry, the, the fantastic ratings or bad ratings don't necessarily mean the show will or won't sell. Um, you know, we've had shows that haven't rated particularly well, maybe not got past pilots, yet have gone on to do fantastically. Again, I'm using the same example, but Come Dine With Me has rated for, or rated for years well on Channel 4 in the UK. Yet it took, I think, Vox version in Germany before it went yeah. global. Um, yet it was rating well, it was doing well. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're important and we will, I wouldn't use the word spin, I would use <laughs> positives and things like that. Um, no shame in spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will look for the positive but, in but the ratings. But Come with me started off well. I mean, it was a slow burner in the UK, but it started off well, and it's grown and grown mm. and grown, and it's had lots and lots of episodes, and that's, I believe that's why other territories <coughs> bought into it. I mean, we have a research department who won't ever let me do anything, and they're very proper, mm. the way they look at their ratings. Um, so, and we, we send those out. But, you, I mean, I believe that the reason why other countries buy a show is because they're buying that track record and those ratings, a, a broadcaster is effectively paying a format fee as insurance for success because that, that show's going to work in their country. And if it works well in one country, it's got a very good chance of working well in another. Not always, but most of the time. I think that's you, true you would big argue, big. you know, in terms of ratings, I mean, what, what's very clear nowadays is uh, commissioners and broadcasters, uh, you know, they won't go out on a limb as they did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, you know, their heads are on the block. Uh, if they can get a show that they know has worked somewhere else, it's going to be easier to sell internally. It's less risk for them. They can always turn around sure. and sort of say, well, hang on, it worked there, there, and there, so I wasn't really taking that big a risk. So and ratings are, of course, pretty important in that aspect. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. We're going to try and get out of here on time. Yeah. We're almost done. We want to thank our panel. I want to say this before we give them a nice round of applause. They all come from different places. All their companies do similar and yet different things. Um, the big takeaway here is no matter what they do, get to know them. That's buy, what we Buy them a drink. Buy them a drink, get to know them, <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay, in stay in touch with them, and get your show done quickly as a way to protect it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, panel. <laughs>